In today's journey, we're going to do a quick overview on adding a 20 by 4 LCD screen and a rotary encoder for use with our Furman Track data logger. The hardest part about this project is finding the right parts, as it's really easy to overthink it. The screen just needs to be a 20x4 I2C compatible, and the rotary encoder needs to be able to spin 360. And if you're still confused, check out the links in our description for the parts that we ordered. To make today's video a little quicker, we're going to assume that you've already installed your program on your Raspberry Pi, and we're just moving on to flashing the Arduino itself. That's just a technical term. Don't worry, the program's going to take care of most of the hard stuff for us. Now excuse us as we get this wired. For the screen, SDA goes to A4 and SCL goes to A5. The rotary encoders can vary a little bit. We went with one that was already attached to a circuit board to make our life a little easier. SW should go to 7, DT to 8, and CLK to 9. If your encoder is acting funny, try plugging or unplugging the VCC to 3 volts, or you might have the wrong firmware installed. To install the right firmware, select Device to Control, select Flash Device. Next, we will want to select the right board that you're using from the drop-down box. We are using an Arduino Uno. Then click Submit. This page is more important for other boards, as Arduino Uno only has Arduino Uno. This next page is actually pretty important, because if this is your first time flashing a device, it's good to know the dangers involved. Also, to make this part easier, you want to make sure that your device that you're flashing is not plugged in right now. It's weird but it needs to not be plugged in when you click Scan Devices. If you forgot, there's a chance to fix your mistake here, but just click Scan for New Devices Now after plugging in the device now on this page. It's actually easier to use than it is to explain. If you did it right, only the one you want to flash should be showing up right now. Click Setup. Now, nine times out of 10, we tell you to install the Rev C. But because we're using the I2C screen, we're going to want the I2C version. That's going to be the second one from the top. What's the difference, you ask? Well, the Rev-C is intended for people that are using the custom design shield, whereas the I2C can be used with or without the I2C shield. Now, there is a big difference between the two because it will move which port you plug the one wire sensors into. Not a huge deal, but it does mean that there are technically two different wiring diagrams. And when you're ready, click flash device. You'll be taken to another page that's going to explain that your device is restarting, it's going to be flashed, and if you want more information, to click this link right here. This page that it takes you to is really handy if you're flashing a lot of controllers. It is good to keep in mind, though, that it's not real-time information. So you can see it says running right now, but when I click refresh after it's been running for a little bit, it's going to then say that it's finished. Because removing power from the Arduino while it's being flashed can cause damage, I like to see that it's finished before moving forward. And just because you're not seeing anything right away doesn't mean that something went wrong. Give it a minute, make sure that you've given a chance for all the screens to refresh, and sometimes just come back to it later. I swear it can tell that you're in a hurry and it will mess with you. It may seem archaic to put a screen like this on something that has a web interface, but let's show you how convenient it can really be. First off, it'll have a display that's always showing the temperature, the status, and how long it's been cooling, idling, or anything else for. We don't have any temperature probes plugged in right now, so that's why it's got those dashes in place of an actual reading. But not only can you get a reading without pulling out a phone or going on a computer, you can also adjust whatever's going on with the rotary encoder. And this can be done independent of the Raspberry Pi, meaning you don't even need your Wi-Fi or your network at all to control anything. It's easy to forget that the Pi is actually just there to do the data logging. All of the temperature controlling is actually controlled by the Arduino's code alone. I suppose the Pi does also create the web interface as well. The downside to the rotary encoder is it's a little wonky, but that's what you get for free software. I can't quite figure it out, but sometimes when you go to change mode, it actually selects based off of the text on the left, and other times it uses the text to the right of mode. I, I don't quite get it. But it works, and it's great, and I love it. But I would love it more if you'd click that like button, leave a comment if you have any questions, and check out some of our other videos if you have any other interest in brewing. And seriously, we are here to help. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them, because even this video itself came out of someone asking a question.